Hello, welcome to Smart Bird 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. I'm a structural technology specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. In our recent video segments, we've been talking about how to use or how to add interactivity into your smart notebook lessons. In today's video segment, we're going to focus on what's called the dual page display. It's where you can actually display two different slides of your smart notebook at one time and how you can use that most effectively in your classroom. So let's go take a look and see how that particular slide works. And here I have my dual page display slide. I'm going to go and click on that and hopefully it'll take me to that page. And here I've got a writing passage. So here, at this particular point, it's something you want to present to your, to your class and have them go ahead and read that particular item, kind of presenting your information. But after you have read it and you have discussed it, now you want to pr perhaps add different questions to it, or you want to go and say, well, what more can I add? How can I add interactivity to this reading passage? And so this is where the dual page display comes in very handy. So right now, I'm in full uh, presentation mode. I'm going to go back to my regular field mode that I have here, going back to, to my regular building mode. And if you notice in my toolbar on the very top here, I have a picture of a monitor that has two pieces of paper. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on that because I'll make it into a dual page display. And when I do that, I can now have two different pages being displayed of my particular item. So as I had before, I had my passage that I had of my students. And now here's the work that I want them to go ahead and do. This is where I'm adding the interactivity into my particular lesson. And so right now it's kind of small. So I'm going to go ahead and enlarge it a little bit, making it larger so the kids can see it and I can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and go to full uh, presentation mode. So I'm going to click on the monitor that has the different uh, triangles located on the sides. And I'll go to full presentation mode. And there I go. Now I get a bigger picture of it. And here, again, I can know what I'm working on that's uh, being highlighted in red is the one that it's actually it's active. So I'm going to kind of click over here, and now notice it made that box red. So this is more my active slide. And so here I can go read my directions that I have for my particular class or what I want them to know. For instance, this is talking about definition of independent variables. And so it says part of the experiment which is manipulated or changed. And what the students have to do is drag the question mark to where the independent variable is and the experiment. And so the students would then have to come up to the board. They have to go ahead and read the passage and identify which is going to be the independent variable. Once they identify it, they're going to mark it by placing that, that particular question mark and dragging it over. And as we discussed in our previous video segments, anything on the smart board is an object and can be manipulated. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take that question mark. And I've already read through this, and I know that my independent variable is going to be the dark and the sunlight placed seedlings. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to go ahead and drag. Now notice what happened here. I'm dragging my thing item over to where the dark is. That's so one of the independent variables. But notice now I don't have another question mark to go and put to the other side. So when I'm building my lesson, there's something that I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it back to my other page. And I want to be able to clone that to make, to make what's called an infinite cloner. Though I can add is an indefinite number of, of question marks I need to use for my particular passage. And so right now, if you notice the marquee is, the, the editor is up by doing the marquee select. I'm going to go down to the drop down menu here, and I'm going to choose infinite cloner. And once I do that now, when I click on it, I'll be able to have as many question marks as I need for my presentation. So at this particular point, I'm going to go put a question mark over here by the dark, and it didn't work too. Let me try that again and put that on the dark. There it is. And one of the really uh, kind of weird things about Smart Notebook is even though I set this one infinite cloner, the one that is cloned or the, the actual the, the replica of it will still have the editing features. And that's OK. You just kind of click out of it, and you won't see that anymore, that particular uh, editing tool. But now I can go back to my other page again and grab another tr question mark. and and drag it over to where it says sunlight, because I know that those are going to be my two independent variables. And as I go on with my particular lesson down here, I'm going to scroll down my page. Actually, I don't really need to on this particular part. But now I know what is a dependent variable. And the dependent variable is going to be the different areas of, and again, I'm going to have to go back and check. And it was not set to infinite cloner. I'm going to move that down here, set that to infinite cloner. You can see how, as you're building lessons, if things didn't work out, you forgot something to do, how easy it was to go and change on the fly right in front of your students or in front of a live audience here. And so I can go and drag it and put it to the independent variable, which I think is going to be the height right now. 
And for, for all pretty good purposes, it's going to work and so forth like that. Um, so you can get a definite idea of how you're actually using the actual dual page display. But there's actually some really cool built-in features that you can also use. Um, and so let me kind of, kind of show you how that particular item works. So I've got my questions down here. But now let's say you wanted to add some final questions at the end of your lesson. You wanted to write some things down. But you still wanted your passage up here, or you wanted these questions available to you. So let me show you something you can do. I'm going to go back to my single page display. And there's a, something called the pin to page tool. And right now, my toolbar, I don't see it up there. And it's kind of hard to find if I go through my editing tool. So I'm going to change my toolbar. And in my toolbar, I'm going to add a tool, again, called pin page. And how I do that is I go back to my computer screen here very quickly. And I'm going to right click in my toolbar. And when I right click, if I can get this to work. Um, there it goes. I use control here. And I'm going to choose the pin page. And it's this one with a little push pin. I'm going to drag it up to my toolbar up here next to that camera. And now I've added a new tool. And when I'm finished, I click on Done in the bottom right-hand corner. And now I've got the pin to page. So for instance, if I really want to discuss, maybe I don't want to discuss the passage anymore, but I want to discuss about the independent and dependent variables, I'm going to go ahead and mark this side here as being my area that I'm working with. It's highlighted in red. And I'm going to pin the page. And notice when I did that, it, yes, it did move it over. But it actually put these little pin marks that are there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but they're, they're little pin pages. So if I say I wanted to insert a page, I can go to my Insert Page button here. And now I've got a blank page to go ahead and write different questions with my students that I may have. And I'll just draw some squiggly lines right now for the sake of time on the TV studio. But you can definitely see how this page will definitely stay static. And I can keep adding pages as my information goes on. So again, if I wanted to add another blank page, I can simply go to the blank page in my toolbar, click on it, and now I've got another blank page. And what it does is kept inserting the different pages. And let's, so to actually give you an idea of what it did, I'm going to go back to my tab. And on my tab, in my gallery here, my, 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 sorry, my gallery, my, my page sorter here, you can see there, there was my original page, which was my dual page display here. And you can see the different pages that I added that I'm seeing right there. So that's, again, how we kind of kind of use that different uh, pin to page tool. That kind of wraps it up for today as far as how to use a dual page, uh, dual, dual page pin display, uh, dual page display with the actual pin, pin page feature. I'm sorry about that. And um, if you like it, we hope you could use it in your class. And we'll see it's got a, a definitely great use for it.